I'd like to welcome everyone to the Wednesday night uh, Bible study here at Glassport Assembly of God. Uh, we are still uh, on the Sermon of the Mount. I hope everybody comes came prepared to uh, hear what Pastor the message that Pastor has to uh, give us tonight the teachings. So uh, it's, it's a beautiful day out there today. Uh, uh, if all these days were like this, it would be a great. I'll be I'll be planting my uh, my tree out in the backyard there. Amen. I'd have some waterfront property, huh? What's your message about Sean Beck? Uh yeah. Uh, yesterday uh, evening, uh, my son Sean and his wife Beth uh, had a daughter, uh, seven pounds and eleven ounces. They're both doing well. Uh, my wife is probably going to kill me because she's watching this, but I forget the name of the baby. <laughs> I put you on the spot. What's the name? Annabella. 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 That's it. <laughs> Thanks. So we're proud. Grandparents, once again, uh, uh, everyone is doing well. Uh, so let's just pray. I, I'd be better praying than what I'd be talking about at times. Father God, as we come before you, Lord, Lord, I just want to thank you for blessing us Amen. here tonight, Lord, and blessing our family with another uh, child of yours, Father God. Lord, I know that this baby is going to be raised up in the ways that you would have it to be raised. So, Father God, as we come before you tonight to to study your word, to dive into your word, Father God, to learn more about you, Lord, I would just ask you now to uh, move upon us. Holy Spirit, we just ask that you would stir within us, be our teacher tonight, teach us, open our eyes and ears to what you would have for us tonight. And Lord, bless just bless Pastor and his family, Father God, as during these trying times. And Lord, just bless him tonight as he gives forth the word. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you. I'm sorry about that. Sometimes when, when it's live, you get caught sometimes and I've been there. I've been tongue-tied a few times. Anyway, uh, welcome once again. So glad that you're with us tonight. And uh, just have a couple of announcements I want to share with you. Uh, first of all, about our, our, our dear sister and the Lord, of, of Roberta Davies, uh, that she passed away on the 25th. And she actually would have been, she would turn turn 85 today. And so... Uh, she was just an awesome, awesome lady. Uh, you know, sometimes you know she you know, she looks so you know meek and, and mild and whatever, but you know she really had a story, uh, a story that really honored God, and and she was a faithful, a faithful servant. Just a few things that that I want to to share with you about her and. Uh, that I didn't know that actually at one time she was employed at our national headquarters of the Assemblies of God in Springfield, Missouri. Okay, she actually was employed by them for a while. Not sure exactly what her task was. Uh, she uh, she taught at Zion Bible Institute for 35 years, and um, wow, that that's amazing. She was an ordained minister. And she also co-pastored several churches with with her husband. So, uh, you know, what what a full life, uh, you know, just just a full life. Uh, she, you know, she leaves behind uh, you know children, grandchildren, great grandchildren, and and, uh, and siblings, and and just a lot of friends and family. And so, you know, we're gonna you know, we're gonna miss her, uh, but but we know 
that uh, towards the end of, of her life here, you know, she was, you know, dealing with some very serious health issues, and so, um, amen, my understanding that she passed away peacefully in her sleep, and boy, what a way to go, right? <laughs> you know, to wake up in heaven, isn't that, isn't that something, just to wake up in heaven, and so, so we know that, that she's with the Lord rejoicing, and so on this coming Friday at 2 o'clock, uh, family and friends will be gathering here at our church, Glassport, for a celebration service, and so to honor her memory, and so anyway, also too, uh, that on June 7th, and this is, uh, you know, we're going to be reopening, and uh, there's a good possibility that prayerfully that maybe we could even be in the green by that time, not counting our chickens before they're hatched, but um, but we will be reopening. We are in the yellow phase, so we're able to have at least 25 people. Uh, we're grateful for our two buildings that we have. Uh, we have our main, uh, our main church, and so we're going to be having 25 here, and also we're going to be opening up our youth center for live streaming down there as well with 25. And so, like I said, I'm hoping that, hey, in green, and I think we can certainly exceed a lot more than that. And so... Uh, but also on that day that we are kind of re-engaging back as church, as church, uh, that we also are going to be launching our our new name, uh, River City Church. Uh, so, uh, someone asked me recently, "Are we still Assemblies of God?" Yes, <laughs> okay, we are Assemblies of God. We are affiliated with the with them. Uh, we are grateful for that, and and uh, but we're just changing. Our, our name and, and so we will be celebrating that as well on that June 7th so what a day it will be that we'll be coming back together meeting as a church and we'll also be the River City Church okay uh, on June 6th which is the Saturday before that in preparation for uh, for our launch and for our services to uh, that we are planning a a work day Okay, now we're going to be doing what we need to do as far as being safe. Uh, you know, we're not going to be working in huddles, you know, but there's lots of things that need to be done, things on the outside of our buildings. So if you have weed whackers, things like that, if you like working outdoors, you know, clipping and cutting and trimming, and, and so please bring your tools with you. Uh, we want to make sure that our buildings are clean. Sanitize. We know that they will be ahead of time, but there's just a lot of things. Also, we're going to be putting up some new signs about our church being River City Church. So there's just a lot of things that need to be done. So we're going to be planning a work day on that Saturday. Uh, not sure exactly what time right now, but we will let you know that, okay? So as soon as you might think, well, I was going to say as soon as I know that, You'll know it, but you might be wondering, well, how come you don't know it? Okay. Well, I'm also working in working with others, so we you know, we just want to make sure that we can get the right time on that. So, hey, that's exciting. So, uh, this coming Sunday, Pentecost Sunday, uh, it's, it's going to be great. Um, you know, even though we're still limited to the number of people that can be here. But the Holy Spirit has no limitations, okay? God is omnipresent. He is everywhere, okay? And he'll, be, he'll meet you right where you are. And so I hope that you have uh, taken to heart the message that, that was shared to, with you on, on, on Sunday about seeking, believing, and waiting. And I hope that you're preparing your heart for God just to really do something special in your life. And, I'm excited. I just believe that, you know, as we re-engage in church life again, that uh, it's just going to be, it's going to be over the top. Amen? So, get excited, get pumped up, and so we're going to continue in our Bible study, uh, Sermon of the Mount. Great, great sermon, and I tell you, I've, I've learned so much even as I am preparing these things that I've never, you know, never really thought about before. And so today is another one of those, you know, uh, your verses that I really haven't really spent a whole lot of time thinking about it. When I think I know, I thought I knew what it meant, and I come to realize that, well, you know, it's like I wasn't really totally off, but I didn't really see the full picture, okay? And so if you got your Bibles, 
and uh, we also have our screen to help you if you don't but uh, in Matthew uh, chapter 6 uh, we're going to be looking at that we, so we're studying the Sermon on the Mount and uh, we're in verses actually we're going to be kind of in verses 19 through 24 I know last week we talked about 19 20 and 21 but what I want you to see is that most of us are really familiar with verse 21 or actually verses 19 through 21. So let me read them. Uh, Matthew 6, 19 through 21. And I'm sure these are verses that you've heard many times, read many times. If you are a Bible reader, you have read these verses, okay? Do not lay up for yourselves treasures upon earth where moth and rust destroy and where thieves break in and steal. But lay up for yourselves treasure, treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust destroys and where thieves do not break in or steal. Verse 21, which is really that, that verse I want to highlight. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. Now let's jump down uh, to two verses. Let's skip 22 and 23 for a moment. And let's look at verse 24. Okay, That says, No one can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will be loyal to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and manna. So, uh, so let's read now verses 22 and 23. And we're going to read probably this maybe three or four times during our study tonight. For the lamp of the body is the eye. If therefore your eye is good, your whole body will be full of light. Just think about that for a second. If, you're, if, you're, if your eye is good, okay? Verse 23, but if your eye is, is bad or if it's evil, your whole body will be full of darkness. If therefore the light that is in you is dark, how great is that darkness? So the, the verses before and after these two verses, Matthew 6, 22 and 23, verse, verse 21 and verse 24, you know, deal with what? Treasure and money. And actually, you could just kind of, kind of skip 22 and 23 because it really makes sense when, when you think about it. Now we're not skipping it, but but listen, you know, it actually flows if you read verse 21 and go right into verse 24. And the gist of it would be something like this: Treasure God in heaven, not money on earth, because you can't serve two masters. They kind of flow together, right? All right, you can't serve two masters, God and money. So why does Jesus link these two sayings about money and God with a saying or, or, or a saying about the good eye and the bad eye? And it's really, you know, when, when you think about it, those two, verse 21 and 24, just naturally kind of flow together. But he throws something right in between those two verses. And they are profound, really. And so as we look at them tonight, I, I, I'm just trusting that the Lord's going to open our eyes to really see what he is speaking about. So the key to understanding, verses 22 and 23, and let me just read them again. The lamp of the body is the eye. If therefore your eye is good, your whole body will be full of light. But if your eye is bad, your whole body will be full of darkness. If therefore the light that is in you is darkness, how great is that darkness? So the key uh, to really understanding these verses is, and uh, let's turn to Matthew chapter 20, okay? Turn to Matthew chapter 20 with me, and I'm not going to take the time to read this, this whole parable, but it's the parable of, uh, of the workers in the vineyard. You remember that, okay? And this sermon has been preached by many evangelists, many preachers, and it's a great, great text, okay? And so we're going to kind of look at this. And, and so Jesus had just told them about a parable of workers in, in the vineyard, okay? Some of them had agreed to work from 6 a.m. to 6 
PM for a de de Daenerys, okay? Just, just think about that, okay? That's a 12-hour workday. Where's the labor laws back in those days, okay? And so, you know, people would show up at 6 o'clock in the morning, and they would work until 6 o'clock in the evening, and they would receive one dinera. Now, that value of money in those days would have been between 2 to $4. I mean, that's... Yeah, that's kind of what it would be. It's not a, a whole lot of money. And so then the story goes on where it says, then the master hired some who started at 9 a.m. And so they had what? Not a 12-hour workday, but they had what? A 9-hour workday. And then others at noon. Well, you know, they worked from what? From 12 noon to 6, to 6 p.m. And finally, some be hired at 5 p.m. And then they worked what for one hour so when the day was done okay uh you know at 6 p.m he paid all the workers the same thing he the bible tells us he paid them all what a denaro in other words he would he you know he lavishly was generous to those who only worked one hour and he paid the agree amount to those who worked 12 hours so if you got your bible in verse 8, let's just read half of it because it's such a great, great story. And, uh, and so Matthew 20, verse 8. So when evening had come, the owner of the vineyard said to his steward, Call the laborers and give them their wages, beginning with the last to the first. So he began with what? The one who worked one hour. And then he went to the one who worked, what, six hours and then nine. All right. But when the first came, they supposed, who was the they? Okay, uh, I skipped the verse. And when and when they came, and when those came for who were hired about the eleventh hour, they each received a de Daenerys. But when the first came, they supposed that they would receive more, and they likewise received each a denaro. And when they had received it, they complained against the landowner, saying. These last men have worked only one hour, and you made them equal to us who have been who have borne the burden and the heat of the day. If you've ever been in Israel, okay, and the heat of the day is hot, okay? But he answered one of them and said, Friend, I am doing you no wrong. Did you not agree with me for a dinera? Alright? Take what is yours and, and go your way. I wish, I wish to give to this last man the same as to you. Now, verse 15. Is it not lawful for me to do what I wish with my own things? Or is your evil eye because I am good? Or is it your evil eye because I am good? So the last will be first and the first last. For many are called, but few are chosen. So what does an evil eye or, or a bad eye refer to in here? Uh, most scholars believe that what he is referring to is that, is, that, um, is that one who has a evil eye or a bad eye, you've heard that expression, you have an evil eye. That's not a compliment according to the Bible is that one who cannot see the beauty of grace. Is one who cannot see the beauty of grace. And Jesus is using this parable to reveal to us how we look at things and people who may appear less worthy of favor or at least grace in our eyes. Let me ask you a question. Have you ever been upset about someone who may have gotten blessed with something and you thought, well, what about me? That, yeah, we've all been there, right? Okay. Remember the prodigal son? Remember that, that parable of the, the prodigal son? What, what was the attitude of the son who stayed at home, did his chores, did what was expected of him to do? He was a good son, obeyed his father. What was his attitude? Did he demonstrate a, a good eye towards his brother? No, no. Actually, he demonstrated what would some, what would some, that perhaps Jesus would say, he demonstrated an evil eye, a bad eye, towards the mercy and grace that was shown to what? To his brother. 
the parable here in Matthew 20 speaks that salvation is for all. There's no question Jesus is referring to, uh, you know, uh, that no matter what season of life that you might be, you know, if you receive Christ. But have you ever thought, <laughs> I just, in, our, in your humanity, have you ever been tempted to think that, um, that here is someone on their deathbed and they, and they receive Christ and, and yet they spent their entire lives just living for themselves and uh, how do you view this? Well, we, you know, we might think, wow, man, I spent, I spent my whole life in church and I've done all this and I've done all that and, and, and boy, you know, it, it, is, is it fair? Well, Opie, what, what's your eye? The Bible said the lamp, the lamp of the eye, okay? If your eye is evil, and what you would see is that, hey, that person doesn't deserve heaven. That person doesn't deserve grace. You know, they just kind of get that little fire insurance right before they take their last two or three breaths. But, but isn't God's salvation for everybody? An evil eye is one that is blind to mercy, you know, blinded to see the real value in things, heavenly versus earthly. We can't, we, you know, we can't discern the difference. And what's, what was he talking about before these verses? Don't lay up for, your, for yourself treasures of this earth where moth and rust and someone can break in and steal, but lay up your, for yourself treasures in heaven where what? There is a reward for you. And, but sometimes, you know, our eye, our eyes are, are, are blinded to what, you know, we can't see really. So that is exactly what the bad eye means here in chapter 6 when Jesus said the lamp of the eye. The lamp of the body is the eye. So with that flow of thought, let me just kind of paraphrase these verses. Don't lay up treasures on earth, but lay up treasures in heaven. Show that your heart is fixed on the value that God is for you in Christ. Make sure that your eye is good, not bad. That is, make sure that you see heavenly treasure as infinitely more precious than earthly material treasure. When you, when your eye sees, when your eye sees things this way, you are full of light. But if you don't see things this way, then even the light that you think you see is dark. You know, it's scary uh, how treasure and how money can distort our vision. Mm -hmm. And I believe that's kind of really at the heart of what Jesus is talking about. A couple of verses, 2 Corinthians 4.4, 4, and I'm reading from the New Living Translation, so it might be a little different on your screen, but it's still the Word of God. It says, Satan, who is the God of this world, has blinded the, the minds of those who don't believe. Those who are unable to see, they can't see. They can't see the value of, of heavenly treasures or grace or mercy. They are unable to see the glorious light of the good news. They don't understand the message about the glory of Christ, who is the exact likeness of God. You know, treasures and money and things like that are oftentimes the objects that Satan uses most to, to blind us from really seeing what really matters. Perhaps maybe that was you at one time. Maybe that was your life. You know, you know, blinded by your materialism, blinded by your pursuit, you know, blinded by your ambition, blinded by a person, you know, or, or whatever it might be. Uh, and Paul in Ephesians chapter one, listen to this here. This these are some just some great verses. E Ephesians chapter uh, one, verse fifteen. Therefore, I also, after I've heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and of your love for all saints, do not cease to give thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayers, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give to you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him, the eyes of your understanding being enlightened. Boy, I, I think we just really, Jesus is... Right there, right in between those two verses, that those two passages that we looked at. You can't serve God and money and when he's talking about the treasures and you know, right there he throws I think that's what he 
I think that's what he's throwing in. He says, we need revelation. We need the eyes. You need your eyes open to, to, to see, you know, to see what's real, what's important. That the eyes of your understanding may be what? Enlightened. You, you know, remember it says, for the lamp of the body is what? It's the eye. It goes on to say that you might know what is the hope of his calling. What are the riches of the glory of his inheritance and the saints? And what is the exceedingly greatness of his power towards us who believe according to the working of his mighty power? You know, it is just amazing what, what, what God is saying to us here. And, and, and Job 31 uh, you know, tells us that we are to make a covenant with our eyes. In the context of Job 31, 1, and let's just look at it, we have it up on the screen. Job says, I have made a covenant with my eyes. Why then should I look upon a young woman? The Bible says here that Job made a covenant. A covenant is usually between two parties. It was a covenant between, between his heart and his eyes. Because mm -hmm. Job knew that what would determine the flow of his heart is through the gateway, through the eyes. So he made a promise not to look, uh, he made a promise not to look lustfully at a woman, not to use his eyes for evil. evil. See, so, you know, whether it's a woman or whether or not it's any other earthen treasure that, well, we can fixate our eyes on things, can't we? Okay, I mean, we can just, you know, we can fixate our eyes upon our future. We can fixate our eyes upon our careers or money or uh, things. It doesn't really matter what it is. Job tells us the reason why that we need to make this covenant with our eyes. In verse 4, it says, For does he not see my ways? <laughs> I mean, think about that for a second. Does he not see my ways? We oftentimes think that we're kind of maybe, maybe getting away with stuff. Yeah. Jesus here in these verses, quite bluntly, can I just tell you, can I just be blunt about it? He says, is your eye evil or do you have a good eye? Because it's what enters through your eye gate that goes to your mind that goes where? It goes to your heart. For, the, for what did he say? For where your treasure is, <laughs> here's your heart. And it all comes what? Through the eyes. It's what we, it's what we behold. Uh, there's, a, there, there's a principle that I learned years, years ago that we, that we get from 1 Corinthians, and we won't turn there now, but where it talks about that we are changed from glory to glory as we behold as we behold him. It's called the beholding principle. It's like you become what you behold. <laughs> what are you beholding? What are you looking at? What are you fixing your eyes upon? What, what got your attention? What grabs your attention, your gaze? And, 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 and Jesus is saying very, very, very clearly is that, is that, is that, is that there will be things that will, will grab after your eyes. For that, for the lamp of your body is what the light of your body is what is your eye. So if your eye are drawn more by whatever than by Christ, then perhaps we need to pray that God would give us a good eye. <laughs> Amen. What do you think yeah. that he that he would give us? Maybe we need to go to the eye doctor. <laughs> I have an eye doctor appointment on Friday because. It doesn't appear like my glasses all, all the time. I really see as clear as I would like to see. And so I need, to, I need to have an eye exam. See, the eye influences, the eye influences what, what's in your heart. Okay. And the heart is revealed by what? Your treasure. What you treasure. Can I just say that again? Your eye influences the heart. It does. And the heart is revealed by what it treasures. The lamp of the body is the eye. If therefore your eye is good, your, your whole body will be full of light. 
but if your eye is bad, now this is Jesus, this is Jesus, you know, he's like, you know, you know he's, he's always seemed like so positive, but sometimes you just got to say it like it is, but if your eye is bad, then your whole body will, will follow, your body will follow that. If therefore the light that is in you is darkness, just think about that last phrase that he says, and we're going to be closing in just a moment. But just think about that. If therefore the light that is in you is darkness, how great is that darkness? How consuming is that darkness? And First John you know, talks about God as light. Okay, and that we are to what we are to walk in the light. Okay, well, the way that we're going to walk in the light is is really by the things that we see. You know, maybe the Holy Spirit is speaking to you right now. I know he's been speaking to me earlier today as I was, uh, you know, writing down some, some of these things that I knew that I was going to share with you. And, uh, you know, I, I don't think that I'm altogether as, as careful as I need to be in what comes through my eye gate. What about you? It'd be very subtle, isn't it? I mean, the enemy is does not always just come and, and announce himself boldly with the trumpet. I am the devil, and I, you know, and my purpose is to destroy your life. Many times, is, is very subtle. Matter of fact, you don't even know he's doing it until, until sometimes the work is already done. You know, don't underestimate the power of those things that you give attention to. You know, and so, you know, whatever it might be, uh, you know, if there's an area. Um, if there's an area of your life that that you know that I just just want you to just understand is that that you cannot underestimate what goes through your eyes, and so that we can we can agree in, in prayer. If there's an area, sometimes uh, you know it's you know it's watching too much, watching too much TV, or it's maybe it's not watching <laughs> watching too much of the wrong things on TV, and then we're wondering why our, our hearts are, 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 are maybe not as pure as they, as they, as they should be. You know, but why, why are we struggling with thoughts? Why, why all, all of a sudden I'm being tempted in areas that I haven't been tempted in for a while? Maybe, well, it's maybe because you've perhaps been viewing things that you shouldn't be viewing. I mean, it doesn't. It usually doesn't ha happen by accident. It usually, it it happens because we give ourselves. You know, we open ourselves to these things, and, and we're human. I think God. You know, God knows that as well as you do that that, that we're human. And I believe that's the reason why Jesus here is so. I mean, he, you, know, he, you know, well, he is the Word of God, okay? You know, he's the eternal Word of God. And in the midst of these two things, which is two of the two of the most difficult things that most of us will battle all of our lives. Is that we will battle with the earthly, the earthly treasures versus the heavenly treasures, and it's so easy to what to just go go off in that direction because it is appealing to the flesh, it's appealing to our eyes and our ears, okay. And then how many of us struggle with the whole issue about 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 money? In verse twenty four, for you cannot serve God and and men. Okay, you cannot serve two masters and sandwiched in between that I believe that Jesus kind of really gives us hey if you want to have if you know if you want to keep it all in perspective then understand this keep your eye good <laughs> okay and if, and if you're struggling with you know with with uh, you know with earth and earthly things and, and the emphasis of your life has shifted and, and the, the priorities of, of your life have shifted from the eternal to the temporal then it may be that it's because it's what you've given your eyes to and the eyes are what the gateway okay and all of a sudden you know maybe you're you know consumed with money making money and 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 there's nothing wrong with that god knows that we need that stuff god, god knows that we need money we need to pay our bills but but sometimes we can you know we can just you know just get over i mean overboard about it so wrapped up in it tied up that all we're thinking about i remember years and years ago oh my gosh before we decided to move out of phoenixville and you know, and just so wrapped up in, in, in just money and bills and this and that, that it can, you know, probably thinking about it hours every single day. Boy, what a bondage you find yourself in, okay? And, and so, 
That's not what God has for us. God doesn't have that for you. Yeah, we need money. You know, we need earthly things. Yeah, we need homes and cars and clothes and food. And But yet, these, these things are not the most essential things. And so right in the middle of that, Jesus says what? Is your eye evil or is your eye good? Because if you're struggling, if you're struggling with these things, it may be because your eye is evil. Or at least it's been viewing things that are not that are evil. Does that make any sense? I think this is what Jesus here, I mean, just, you know, when I began just to look at these things, <laughs> just like, wow. And I was convicted because there's times when, you know, you know. So I want to challenge you tonight. I want to challenge those, the few of us that are in the room tonight, is that, is there an area, is there an area that you need to make a cover? You need to make a cover, like Job. Is there an area of your life that you need to, between you and your eyes, you know, I, I'm not going to read those things anymore. I'm not going to read those kind of books anymore. Or I'm not going to view those things on, on television. I'm not saying television. You need to throw the TVs out or anything like that. I'm not saying that. But there's, but there's, <laughs> there's enough junk on there that you don't really need to be watching. And then if, you, then if you're struggling with sensual things or you're struggling with, 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 you know, with your thought life and purity and issues like that, just like perhaps Job was struggling with purity issues, that I made a covenant with my eyes that I would not look upon that young woman. Okay? And, and then if you find yourself viewing R-rated movies, and, and R-rated movies today are like, I mean, you know, Remember, I mean, you know, sometimes my wife and I will pull up an old PG movie, movie, from, well, like the old PG movies are like R-rated today. Some of them, okay, it's like you really got to be careful what you pull up, you know. And you know, are, are are we getting petty? Maybe you might be. Well, Pastor, you're just getting petty, you know. You know, that's just the world that we live in. Yes, that's the world that we live in, and the world that we live in is not friendly to you as a believer. Okay. In this world, okay, Jesus said we're in this world, but we are, are not to be of this world. In other words, we're, you know, we, you know, we can't let the world get inside where then it becomes my motivation and my reason and my values. Okay. We live in this world, but that doesn't mean that I gotta partake of the things of this world. So I want to challenge you. Is your eye evil? Are you watching things that you shouldn't be watching? Are you reading things that you shouldn't be reading? Are there things on your phone, sites on your phone that you're going to, you shouldn't be going to? And all that stuff is so available. That's what really terrifies me about some of my grandkids and all they have phones because many of them don't have the discipline. Well, many adults don't have the discipline, okay? Let's face it, okay? And so I want to pray with you. I just want to, this, you know, this is kind of shorter tonight, but I just you want it to be shorter because I think, I think we just need to let this kind of get into, get, let it get into your heart. For Jesus said, I mean, these words are so profound. For where your, for where your treasure is, there is your heart. Hmm. I mean, I don't think Jesus was just trying to come up with these cute sayings. They, they, they're powerful truths that have reality and consequences in our lives. Okay? You cannot serve two masters. You know, we, we, try to, we try to balance that out, don't we? Too, too many Christians are trying to, trying to walk the tight line. Is your eye evil? Is your eye good? Hallelujah. You know? And so I want to pray with you. I want to, I'm not here to, I'm not here to judge or anything like that. I just, I just let the word of God speak to your heart. If it spoke to you about an area of your life that you want to make, that you need to make a covenant with. And then we're going to agree together. I'm just going to ask those that are in the room here with me if they would just kind of stand where they are. 
and, and we're just going to come together before the Lord and just let just let the Lord just search search our hearts. Lord, we just open ourselves up to you. And Father, your word even in Job it says, For you what? You see all my ways. Yes. Lord, you you see some of the some of the things that I've viewed. And Lord, I'm not trying to bring just a heavy hammer of conviction and condemnation, no. Lord, you, you love us too much for those sorts of things. God, you want what is best for us. God, you want us to enjoy life, to life to the full. Let, let, Lord, we, you know, we cannot enjoy this life and, and still be, be dancing with the world. So, Lord, we, we just ask that you would just speak to our hearts if there's an area I know that there's an area of my life that I'm just bringing to the Lord I want to make a covenant with my eyes and I'm asking you that there's an area of your life I want you just to just to just if you know what it is then we're just going to do this together I'll lead in prayer you don't have to repeat after me but I I'm just going to pray for you and we're just going to believe God for victory we're going to believe God that he's doing a work in, in my life and that he is he is drawing me closer to him. And so, Father, I just come to you and I, Lord, I believe that there are many of us, Lord, that the Lord, that we need to make a covenant here with our eye over a particular area. It could be a sin, it could just be a weakness, a flaw, or whatever it might be. But God, we we bring it to you and we confess it, God. We confess. Lord, this area of weakness, this, this, this area many times in which the devil gets in and does his, and does his work in our lives. And Father, we, we make a, a covenant between ourselves, but God, we also, Lord, need you, Lord God. You're the vital part of this covenant, God, that we also uh, ask you to enter into this covenant with us, God. Hallelujah. Lord, as we, God, we don't have the strength, but Lord, we rely upon the strength of God, Lord, the strength of the Holy Spirit to help us, God, to, to fulfill this covenant, God, Lord, to, to walk in this, Lord, each day. And God, we're believing, God, Lord, Lord God, that you are going to move, God, for where the lamp of the body is, God, Lord, that is the eye. And so, Father, we, we do this today. And we rejoice, God, in the strength and the victory and the answer, God, for what you're doing in our lives. God, God our, our deepest desire, I believe at the, at the core of our hearts, every believer, their true desire is what? Is to store up heavenly treasure. Hallelujah. So, Lord, we, 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 we just thank you for what you're doing. We give you glory for it. And we pray this in the name of Jesus. Amen. And a, amen. amen. You know, I'm so glad that that you were that you prayed that with us. And I'm going to be praying for you, and and, and we're all going to be praying for each other because I I believe even though this is kind of a serious, I know we kind of gotten to some serious topics the last few weeks, but this is really something that 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 many many I believe the enemy just trips up so many of God's precious people. You know, over just the carelessness of the things that they're watching, the things that they're viewing. And so, you know, we just want to kind of bring that in tonight. And so uh, we, we love you. We're so glad that you joined us tonight. We're look for, looking forward to seeing you on, on Sunday through, through, uh, through Facebook. And uh, we're really looking forward to next Sunday, June 7th, coming together as the body of Christ. So we just bless you, Father. We just thank you for this day, you, Lord. Lord, as we, we leave. Some of you, you don't have to leave your homes. You're already at home. But, Lord, as we uh, just uh, thank you for this day. Thank you for your blessing, God. Thank you for your word. And, God, we just uh, just pray for just, uh, just for the rest of our week. God, we have a great week serving God, loving you, Father, following you, Lord. Lord, just being a follower of Christ. Hallelujah. Ephesians uh, you know, 5, where it talks about be imitators of, of Christ, Lord. And Lord, that's our desire, Lord, is to is to be is to follow you, Lord, to walk with you. And we thank you for it. In Jesus' name. Amen. So Lord bless you till next amen. time.